Wow, this is a uh, perfect weather. Hello everyone, I'm Teresa Culver. We'll be starting shortly. Hello. 
I'm Teresa Culver. I'm the director of the undergraduate program in civil engineering. And it's my great honor to welcome everyone today, the graduates, students, parents, family, friends, and the faculty to the class of 2020 virtual graduation event. We are excited today to award bachelor's degrees in civil engineering to present student and teaching award winners and in general to celebrate the culmination of the hard work of our students and the support that they've received from their family and friends. You may not know that our program is actually the second oldest public civil engineering program in the country. And with over 160 years of civil engineering graduations at UVA, this is the very first virtual, virtual celebration of graduates. So we hope everyone's internet uh, works fine and everyone stays connected. The planning for this event has been student driven and we hope that you will enjoy the ceremony. We also thank the staff who have worked very hard to facilitate this event. So a few suggestions. Your mics um, have been um, turned off and your video cameras of the audience turned off. So we ask that you keep your microphones off throughout the ceremony. And if you are being specifically recognized for an award, you are encouraged to turn on your video cameras and wave to the audience. For the rest of the graduates, there'll be an opportunity at the end of the ceremony to turn on your videos. To best be able to enjoy the Zoom ceremony, I also suggest adjusting your view to a gallery view so that you are able to see those images as they pop up. We are disappointed that we will not be seeing our graduate stu graduating students in person or be able to meet their families today but we do hope that that will occur at a future on-ground ceremony. I want to begin today by um, introducing the faculty. I've been saying we because all the faculty members are also here to celebrate with you. And I want to introduce our ESE faculty who support the civil engineering program. And as I read the names of faculty members, you are welcome to uh, wave to the um, audience. So our faculty members who support the civil engineering program, we have um, Larry Band, Lindsay Ivy Burden, Donna Chen, Andres Clarens, Jose Gomez, Jonathan Goodall, Devin Harris, Arsalan Hadarian, Lydie Klotz, Benkat Lakshmi, Osman Osbalut, Brian Park, Lisa Kalosi Peterson, Merrick Jersey Pandera, Julie Quinn, James Smith, and our chairperson, Brian Smith. To the families out there, we greatly appreciate that you have trusted us with your family members over their time at UVA. And it really has been a pleasure and honor to work with your students. As a reminder, we do have a meet and greet from 5 to 6 p.m. today, so that will you have an opportunity to drop in on a Zoom room to meet with faculty members of your choice. Um, those details were sent out to you by email and will be mentioned again at the end of our ceremony. I want to begin with our student awards. We are pleased to give out awards today both to graduating students and our teaching award winners. When I call out an award winner's name, the recipients are encouraged to turn on your video cameras and give the audience a wave. Actually, um, the, the faculty members, you probably can also turn off your cameras now so we can see the other students. Uh, I should note that uh, the graduating class of 2020, as our, our students know, is actually one of our smaller graduating classes, small in number. 
It's one of the smallest that I've seen in the several decades that I've been on the faculty at UVA. But nevertheless, uh, it is truly a remarkable group of students. And it was really difficult to select a subset from your cohort for recognition. The program is able to recognize graduating students through the generosity of Lewis T. Rader, who was a professor in the School of Engineering. Lewis T. Rader Awards um, for the civil graduates are awarded annually to fourth year students who have excelled academically, who demonstrate a capacity for hard work and a willingness and ability to get along with their colleagues. All of the Rader awardees you will see today have earned at least a 3.8 GPA during their time at UVA. Very extraordinary. Our first Raider Award winner is Brendan Fockris. In addition to his outstanding GPA, he has provided extensive service to the department, especially in his role as the president of our chapter of the ASCE. So good job, Brendan. Our next Raider Award winner is Michael Peyton Rice. Peyton, also with an outstanding GPA. Peyton actually started in the School of Architecture and realized that he wanted a more technical training and transferred into the civil engineering program throughout that time, doing outstandingly academically and also providing extensive service to the community. So thank you, Peyton. Our next Award winner is Lindsay Maxwell. Lindsay is receiving two awards. She is being recognized both with a Raider Award and also with the Thompson Award from ASCE. Lindsay graduated with a true 4.0 GPA, which in fact um, is an underestimate of her academic performance since as many of you know, UVA does not give any extra points for A pluses of which she has a remarkable number of A plus degrees and earned 160 credit hours of college credit um, at the time of her graduation. And she also was an intern with the Department of State and with Disney World during the time she was an undergraduate. So well done, Lindsay. Our next award winner is also being recognized with two awards. Emily Chen is receiving the Raider Award from our department and also from the School of Engineering being recognized as an outstanding graduate. To be um, chosen as an outstanding graduate from the school, so that's from every department, you really have to have um, shown excellent in a wide number of areas as Emily has. She has developed um, professional practice experience. She's done some extensive research as an undergraduate, especially in the area of transportation and provided service and leadership while at UVA, especially through the Institute of Transportation Engineers and ASCE. So congratulations, Emily. The next award E is Anna Cerf. Anna is also being recognized with a Raider Award and as a 2020 C's Outstanding Graduate. So I do want to point out that for the entire School of Engineering, there were only four students selected for this recognition of Outstanding Graduate. So as I said, even though it's a small class, two of those four students are from our Civil Engineering Program. Anna has also provided, uh, excelled in many areas. She's worked on research and um, some very successful research in the area of solid waste and also provided leadership in the areas of sustainability and through the Society of Women Engineers. So congratulations and thank you, Anna. The next awards which we are going to give are for the contribution to our teaching effort, um, both for graduate 
teaching and for faculty teaching. So the 2020 graduate outstanding teacher this year, I assume we're gonna go on to the next slide, yes, is Ben Bowes. Ben has provided extensive, excellent instruction for our program. He served as a TA for Introduction for Environmental Engineering. He has TA Geographic Information Systems. And this spring was a co-instructor for our Water Resources Engineering Program. So thank you and well done, Ben. Our faculty outstanding um, instructor in the civil engineering area this year is Jose Gomez. Jose teaches mostly in our structural engineering area, but has also taught fluid mechanics for us and is the lead for the master's in engineering program in civil engineering. And I should say that both the um, graduate teaching award and the faculty teaching award were selected by votes by the undergraduate and graduate students in our program. So we know that they have strong support from our students. So thank you and congratulations, Jose. In our next component of this ceremony, we have two speakers for you today who have recorded messages for the graduates. Our first speaker is Thomas Smith III. Thomas Smith exemplifies a UVA engineer. He earned both a BS and an MS in civil engineering from UVA while focusing on structural engineering. He later earned a law degree from Washington and Lee. And throughout his career, he's shown a special interest in the legal and ethical aspects of civil engineering. And he's been with ASC National for more than 20 years and currently serves as the executive director of the American Society of Civil Engineers. So now we have a message from Thomas Smith. Good afternoon, graduates, families, faculty, and friends. It is my honor and privilege to join you in your homes, no less, as we recognize and celebrate my fellow Wahoos on this wonderful pioneering virtual graduation, quite possibly conducted with the smallest carbon footprint in our beloved university's 200 year history. Let me start off by saying these are certainly challenging and unique times in our history. Sometimes it helps to stop and learn from those who came before us. We've unfortunately been engaged in other global wars. When my father was your age, he was returning from World War II. He grew up during the Depression, left college in his second year to enlist in the Army after Pearl Harbor. He served in the 94th Infantry Division of General Patton's Third Army, fought in hand-to-hand -hand combat as an infantry rifleman on the front lines in Germany and France, including through the bitter cold and snow in the bloody Battle of the Bulge 75 years ago. I've always had great admiration for my dad because he picked the hard road. He picked the road that made a difference ultimately ensuring freedom and liberty throughout the world. Many of his friends and classmates did not return, but he was fortunate enough to come home, finish college, and spend a career with the FBI serving his country. In addition to world wars, we suffered as a nation through other pandemics before. Smallpox, yellow fever, cholera, the Spanish flu, just to name a few. As with these pandemics, I'm confident that solutions will be developed including the vaccines, medical devices, healthcare facilities, and the infrastructure necessary to protect the public health, safety, and welfare. Certainly civil engineers will be essential service providers and critical members of the solutions team. Indeed, it has been civil engineering advancements with clean water and sanitation that have been integral to solving a variety of past pandemic challenges. And it was Lewis Thomas, the former Dean of the Yale Medical School, who said, the greatest advances in improving human health were the development of clean drinking water and sewage systems. So we owe our health as much to civil engineering as we do biology. Be it a pandemic, a hurricane, an earthquake, or a tsunami, the public will always rely on innovative civil engineers to keep them safe. For it is civil engineers who plan, design, build, operate, and maintain our healthcare facilities, transportation networks, sewage treatment plants, drinking water facilities, indeed the cities, towns, infrastructure necessary for our quality of life. Please also understand that you may not always be recognized and thanked for your service, as you should. As an example, in January of 2016, I was in Anchorage, Alaska, with a bunch of other students, younger members, 
uh, ASC conference uh, during a large earthquake. I awoke at 1.30 in the morning on the 10th floor of my hotel. It was shaking violently. The closet door swung open, water splashed out of the toilet bowl onto the floor. I was startled to say the least. Now the hotel, however, performed exactly as it was designed. It did not collapse, and the engineers and students who gathered in the hotel lobby were pretty calm and collected. To this day, I'm eternally grateful to the unnamed civil engineer, structural, geotechnical, who saved our lives that night. They did not appear on the news, as would emergency responders who deservedly receive recognition for saving lives when, when they're at risk from disasters. But those engineers can take comfort in knowing they saved lives that night. They truly made a difference. As you head into the workforce, you're gonna have opportunities to serve, to lead, to make a difference. My advice is that you say yes, willingly accept those challenges, always seeking to do what is right. One of my favorite quotes is from President Teddy Roosevelt, often called the conservation president, which I'll paraphrase as, it is not the critic who counts, not the one who points out how the strong stumble or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to those who are actually in the arena, whose faces are marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strive, who err, who come up short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming. But who do actually strive, do the deeds? Who know great enthusiasm, great devotions, who spend themselves in a worthy cause, who at the best know in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if they fail, at least fail while daring greatly. I sincerely believe that each of you have chosen a profession that puts you squarely in the arena. You didn't pick the easy road, and there is no debating whether your services are essential. We humans need clean water, clean air, sanitation, energy, communication, a supply chain, and transportation network. Civil engineers don't just protect our quality of life, they enable life by providing the essential services we need to live. As President Herbert Hoover, himself a mining engineer, once said, it is a great profession. There is the fascination of watching a figment of the imagination emerge through the aid of science to a plan on paper. Then it moves to realization in stone or metal or energy. Then it brings jobs and homes to humanity. Then it elevates the standards of living and adds to the comforts of life. That is the engineer's high privilege. With this high privilege comes great responsibility. Beyond pandemics, the world faces many challenges. In the United States, much of our infrastructure is reaching the end of its useful life with a cumulative GPA of a D plus, not something your parents will be proud to see you, you bring home on your report cards. There is much work to be done, and we cannot do it the way we did it in the past. We need sustainable, safe, resilient solutions. We need to think differently, evaluate life cycles, be system integrators, working with diverse teams. On a global scale, the world population continues to grow at over 80 million people per year. And the United Nations highlights our challenges with sustainable development goals. Poverty, hunger, equity, clean water, clean air, energy, infrastructure, sustainable cities, and climate, just to name a few. Each of these sustainable development goals is critical for humanity and for our planet, and each of these goals requires civil engineering as part of the solution. You will be challenged with saving lives, presenting, preventing disasters, and finding solutions. Thanks to the University of Virginia, you have the unique skill set. You have this knowledge, the skills, the attitude necessary to design and build the civilizations of the future. A civilization that is sustainable, resilient, safe, and innovative, with solutions that meet environmental, economic, and social needs, and that harmonize with nature and don't fight with nature. You've been trained not just as technical experts, but with professional skills, ethics, leadership, communications, that enable you to be global leaders, building a better quality of life. You've been entrusted with the keys, not just to the future of your generation, but also to the future of generations to come. The decisions that you make, the hard decisions in the arena, will not only impact you and your children, but the health and well being of future generations and of the planet. Quite an awesome responsibility and quite an awesome privilege, a high privilege. You've passed the test, you're already, already ready to go out there and dream big and to deliver. My heartfelt thanks and congratulations to each of you and my best wishes as you go forth and make a difference. Thank you, Tom. Our next speaker is our own Brendan Bacris, also a Raider Award winner, who has a message for his fellow graduates. Hello, everyone. My name is Brendan. 
How's our class representative for the American Society of Civil Engineers at UVA, which is our major's professional organization. I later served as president of ASCE, helping to plan various activities for our class, including this graduation ceremony. And I'm honored to have the privilege of speaking to all of you today. Our class certainly was a unique class by most standards. And this was true way before any one of us had ever heard of the coronavirus. We are very much the first pancake class in a number of ways, a test subject for classes to come. First off, major caps were dropped before us, making our class surprisingly small. But this enabled us to become closer to our great professors and so tight-knit as students. It has been a bumpy road at times from trying to learn Civil 3D the night before Professor Smith's 2010 design project was due, or to being expected to know the conversion for ranking temperature on day one of environmental engineering. We also encounter some challenges, such as having to practice acting skills for a geotechnical engineering project, or by having to explain to Professor Gomez that the fluid level remains the same even after the ice melts. Sorry, you know we love you, Jose. In ASCE, we had to struggle to find dinners that weren't just Papa John's or hummus. And this year, we've been the test subject for year-long capstones and, of course, for Zoom classes. We've had to adjust to the department name changing, to various construction interruptions, and to the civil kitchen being called three different names. But through it all, we've only become closer. I'm extremely thankful to be your classmate and friend. And I think what we have with our civil class is something that most people at UVA just don't have. When I talk to students in other majors or other schools, they never seem to have close ties to their classmates. We do. You are the people that I spent every day with, worked on every project with, and you made me look forward to going to class. Perhaps the worst loss from Zoom classes was not being able to see you guys every day. I'm forever grateful to have such a fun class and community, and I can't wait to come back for various reunions and football games. Stay safe. Go Hoos. Now you champs. Thank you, Brendan. The next component of our ceremony today, and the most important component, is the awarding of degrees. At this time, we would like to award the Civil Engineering Bachelor's Degrees. Professor Lydie Klotz will read the names of each graduate. And please wait to share your video cameras. Um, I'll turn it over to you, Lydie. Allison Bobine, highest distinction. Alina Bade Badir. Indigo Gale Riza. Samuel Adam Cave. Anna Cerf, highest distinction. Emily Catherine Chen, high distinction. Richard. Daryl Dobson, high distinction. Joseph Kent Dunleavy, high distinction.
Bo Gutridge, highest distinction. Charles Lewis Haywood the fifth. Jacob Matthew Hegemeyer. Samuel Heiberger, Hannah Herman, Distinction, Clara. Lahiri Boerchek, Nicholas Kihun Kim, Jane Pearl Long, high distinction. Lindsay Elizabeth Maxwell, highest distinction. Mark Michaud, Dorian Wynn, Distinction. Sarang Sunil Patel. Benjamin Nicholas Redfern. Michael Peyton Rice. Highest distinction. Elder St. John. Hina Shah. Kyla Stein, high distinction. Matthew Stromberg. Meredith Kelly. Sutton, highest distinction. Brendan Charles Vakris, high distinction. All right, congratulations, civil engineering graduates. You can feel free to throw your caps, make as much noise as you wish, and turn on those cameras.
Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure to be with you today. And everyone, congratulations again to all the graduates. You really have succeeded under unexpected circumstances, and we are confident that you will take that resilience with you throughout your careers. It is one of our greatest pleasures to share your future successes, so please keep in touch with us. We'd really love to hear from you. But today, you do have the opportunity, so please join the faculty at our meet and greet at 5 p.m. today. So you should have that information through an email, or you can check the engineering website at the address shown on the presentation to find those Zoom rooms that will be available at 5 p.m. So thank you all and congratulations again. Bye-bye now. I think we'll have to end the meeting, but we look forward to talking with you and seeing you again at a later date.